And hello again, everybody. Uh, Chris Hughes, Carolina Preps coming to you. It's been a while since I've been on one of these shows with uh, you guys, but I wanted to um, bring on um, a coach from the eastern part of the state uh, that, that I think uh, deserves definitely um, some recognition to getting on here. Uh, coach Jonathan Bird, White Oak. Uh, man, you guys are six and one on the season. Uh, but the, the record and, and the, the body of work that I've seen your teams put forth the past two or three years after what I thought was a major rebuild when you took over White Oak has been nothing less than a, a remarkable. And I just want to get on here and talk some football with you, if you didn't mind, Coach. I've got a great group of kids, you know, I've been fortunate enough to, uh, you know, coach at my alma mater. So, you know, we felt like we could get it going. Uh, given the time, you know, unfortunately, the first couple of years we ran into Hurricane Florence. We lost 90 days of school and a whole wing of our uh, of our school building. The next year, Hurricane Dorian and then the pandemic season. So it put us a little behind where we thought we would be. Um, but I, I've been fortunate enough to have good administrators and I've got quality coaches and really great kids. So it's helped really get us on track. Well, I will, well, let's just start right there. We'll, we'll get back to you how, how good your team's been in a second. Uh, you know, I've coached in the state. I, I talk to coaches every day. You know, that has been my mission, I guess, in life for about the past 15 years or so is talking to our football coaches. Um, tell us how important it is to have a solid administration and coaches, not only that buy into your philosophy as a head coach and help you implement it, but also having coaches in the building and, and continuity of the staff, how important and really how vital is that to a program for a head coach to have? Well, I mean, it's a top down thing. If your administration and you do not have the same views and the same values, it's really hard to get a program going in the direction that you want it to do. Um, I was lucky enough to be hired by uh, Dr. Dr. Christopher Barnes, who's now at the county office level. And, you know, he gave me uh, the tools I needed to try to rebuild. You know, he helped me, you know, get coaches in the building. He helped me, you know, try to get my kids into weight training and do what we needed to do. And uh, he's since moved on. And uh, uh, Jocelyn Cassidy is now my principal. And she's she's kind of continued that. They, they try to give me the tools. I have a great athletic director, Chris Grimes. Um, he's a heck of a basketball coach. He's caught me into helping him with, with basketball for the last seven years. But uh, it, it's been it's been a pleasure, you know, to have everybody be on the same page and, you know, no fighting over athletes. We share our athletes. I mean, pretty much my whole football team plays basketball. Uh, you know, they all run track. It, it's been a blessing to have guys with similar visions. And, you know, you can't overemphasize the value of having coaches in the building. You know, the guy, it's the day to day stuff that people don't understand that football coaches have to do with painting the field, cutting the grass, monitoring grades. Uh, dealing with discipline, driving a bus on Friday nights. I mean, there's a lot more that comes to it. And when you got those guys in the building, they understand the process. One thing that I wanted to, um, you, you know, you, you say you can't ever uh, emphasize, you know, the importance of those men in the building. And and, and there's no question about that. Uh, but I also looked at your, your record since you got to uh, White Oak. You can't overemphasize just how much you've meant to that school and, and the success that you guys have looked at. And I'm kind of scrolling through our, our Carolina preps team pages and you almost have to go back to the nineties and then way before that, back into the eighties and seventies yeah. before you've seen some uh, sustained success at white Oak. And yet here you are seven years into it. The past five years have been pretty solid. And, and, you know, I, I got online and looked at some highlights and looked at some film of your team this year. And, and you've got a full fledged bona fide, uh, top 20, almost top 10 team in North Carolina right now. And uh, how, how you did that, that's one of the reasons we're talking about it. It's remarkable because I think, you know, and, and this is something I was going to touch on with you, but I feel like football fans and just the general public in North Carolina, sometimes they lose track of some of our really good teams in Eastern North Carolina. And it's easy to understand you've got your big population bases and, you know, in the middle of the state, the triangle, the triad, the Charlotte region, and the state's almost 600 miles long east to west. So I can understand it from a fan's perspective. But when you travel like I do and you see some of these teams, you know, the Havelocks, the Southwest Onslows, the, the Newburns, you know, the Jacksonville high schools right there in your own County that are so good uh, for you to start to, to rise above the crowd. And, and that group that, that tells me you guys are really doing something special. And, you know, that that's kind of why I'm, I'm having this conversation because, you know, just trying to understand the hows and whys and, and what you're doing to, to really make this sustained change. 
Well, but we, we really started with, I, I tell people this, I recruited the whole school when I got there. I mean, I literally, if, if you were a male who was interested in remotely in football, you know, that's where we started. And once you got our numbers up, the, the athletes were always there. So as long as we build enough uh, sustainable stuff in the weight room, you know, I, I'm a power lifter by nature previously. I mean, I, I've lifted at that Arnold multiple years. I mean, I've, I've kind of done, been there, done that. Um, and so I've been lucky enough that I've got myself in there and I've got all my kids in weight training, not necessarily in one class, but throughout the day. And then the rest of the population that is in those weight training classes or guys who like to lift. So it's been just a good culture of being able to strength train, speed train and buy into what we're selling as a program. Um, you know, sure. and then it helps that. Once you start finding a little success, success is uh, contagious and everybody wants to be a part of it and the numbers keep improving. Uh, you know, we, we've got over 1,100 kids in the school, so we're a good size 3A program. Uh, you know, and it's, it's, we're kind of blessed in the avenue that it's a blessing and a curse, I should say, really. You know, really transient community that it is Jacksonville, North Carolina. Uh, but, you know, the Marine Corps mentality often drifts down to these kids, and so you know, the commitment levels and the buy-in, it's always been there. It's just took some consistency. And like we talked about earlier from the top down, you know, having administrators that were really, that emphasize the importance of a good athletic program. Right. Oh, well, there's no question uh, that, that they're buying into your philosophy and, and that what you're doing from a leadership perspective as the head coach and administering the program is working. Uh, but we both know, former coach myself, that you can't win without some dudes, without the athletes on the field. And, and you've got a pretty good crop of some guys. Uh, I, I look at your quarterback. He's a, a junior dual threat kind of guy. can run the ball, throw the ball. Uh, and Joshua Smith, and then, um, of course, the running back. I mean, you can't deny when you look at film, he just pops out there and says, hey, look at me and uh, senior running back uh, Trey uh, Maggio. I think I got that right. You got it. You got it. Man, yeah, he, man, those are some guys on the offensive field that, you know, as a defensive coach, you're going to have to account for those guys. Yeah, he's a, he's an impressive kid, and you start keying on him, uh, Josh can really push you. And the, the impressive part and the, the – We've only really been in, in two kind of slugfest games. Uh, Jackson got the better of us. And, you know, we were really, really proud of the effort. We really had a chance to win. They stopped us on fourth down in the red zone right there at the end of the game. Um, but we, we have some playmakers at receiver that, that me as a football coach has to do a better job of getting their ball in their hands. But Trey keeps breaking 60-yard touchdown runs. It's, it's hard to, to get the balls in their hands. Um, so, you know, we, we've got weapons. We've got weapons all over the place. We've got a senior heavy offensive line. Uh, you know, there's four seniors up front and, you know, would have been five. We, we lost a, you know, four-star offensive lineman. His dad got orders to Oklahoma. So he's, uh, is at, uh, Fort, uh, in Fort Sill, Oklahoma at Elgin High School. Uh, and so, but, you know, we said blessing and a curse. We had a young man move in. Uh, Javon Altman, who's 6'3 and some change, 290 pounds, and he's only 15. Uh, so he's playing left tackle for us. So those guys do a good job of getting you know their big bodies on other bodies and giving Trey an avenue to run the football. And you know Trey's Trey's done his work, and you know he comes from a long line of you know really athletic family, really athletic household. His brothers, uh, you know, getting carries at North Carolina Central as a redshirt freshman. Um, you know, I suspect. Uh, my phone will continue to ring for a while for Trey, I'm sure. Uh, well, you know, you can't win it on offensive long. And you, I've, I've seen some look like to be some really senior heavy guys on that defense as well. Uh, Nick Johnson, uh, yeah. Keisha Ball stand out. And also just a secondary in general. I think I counted nine or ten interceptions on the year. I mean, it, it looks like all in all that defensive side of the ball is really working well for you. Yeah, we, we've got some talented guys. Nick Johnson's already committed to Elon. Uh, you know, he's a he's a large, rangy defensive end. He's 6'3", 235 pounds, can run, uh, you know, physical at the point of contact. Uh, Keyshawn Hall is kind of one of those diamonds in the rough kids. Uh, you know, he played behind a kid who was a 300-and-some career tackle kid. Uh, so, you know, he was a little slow to start the year, but, man, he's really come on and played well. Uh, you know, we've got four guys up front that we're really pleased with. Uh, Chris Jarman uh, already has uh, uh, two small school offers right now, and I wouldn't be surprised if some bigger schools don't don't pick up later in the year. And then, you know, our back half, we returned – we actually returned the whole back half. We returned the whole secondary, but we moved one guy to outside linebacker. So we have kind of a, 
a newer guy playing uh, free safety, but uh, the two corners are returners. One's a four-year starter in Jameson Avila. Um, you know, he, he's big for a corner. I mean, he's 6'1", you know, with long arm, long limbs. So, you know, it really helps us. And, you know, D-line gets so much pressure up front that, you know, it gives us the opportunity to ball hop a little bit. Mm-hmm. Well, wow. well, um, again, you know, you look at the records, uh, six and one with that that one pickup against uh, Jacksonville, a game that again that you you guys probably, I know you as a coach probably feel like you'd love to have that one back because I, I think that Absolutely. you guys could easily be sitting here undefeated as well. Uh, and and again, you you've got you've got some tough ones coming up, but uh, I think that your resume speaks well uh, as you finish out strong in this regular season and look forward to the playoffs. Uh, before I let you go, though, you know, I, I, I kind of reason I'm getting getting you on here and I'm getting a bunch of other coaches on here is just to kind of introduce you to maybe some people in the state that don't know you. Who were some of the influences in the coaching world uh, that, that kind of put their stamp on Coach Jonathan Bird and, and kind of led you to to be the, the man that you are today as a coach? Well, I, I played in high school. I, I, obviously, I played at Wild Rock High School. I played for Robbie Ellis, who if you look back at, at, at those records on Carolina Preps, you'll see that he, he had a pretty good run there at Wild Rock High School. We won uh, won a conference title one year and went 11 and two with only two losses being the Havelock one year um, as a player. So, I mean, he really, I, we really do a lot of things very similar to what he did when I was uh, a young player. And then uh, I was blessed to play for uh, Jim Cycle at Methodist University he was, you know, Coach Cycle was the all time winners coach at, at Methodist history. Um, he was a great man, uh, great organizer, great motivator. You know, that's really served me well. And my um, offensive line coach in college, Carl Funderburg, uh, uh, he was an individual, let's just say it that way. He was a very intense guy, and, you know, that's really carried over in how I coached the offensive line. Uh, I really just mimic a lot of things that he taught me. And then, uh, you know, my first coaching stint was back, actually back at White Oak under Coach Bob Blick. Um, you know, I really learned a lot about how to run a weight room with 40, 50 kids from him. And it's it's it stays true. I mean, I tell people he's one of the best guys I've ever seen running a weight room as far as organizing and training and going. So uh, I've been blessed to be around a lot of great minds. And then I I have you know two guys on my coaching staff now. My offensive coordinator Derek Savage, uh, you know, he kind of keeps me honest and does more than just let me run the football because that's really all I ever want to do. Um, and then my defensive coordinator is Sean Jones. Sean was actually the linebackers coach at Methodist when I was a player there. Um, and he's been my defensive coordinator from the start. So for the most part, this coaching staff has actually almost all been together from, from the start of uh, my time here. And so, you know, I, I get a lot of influences. Uh, you know, uh, when I was a young coach, I traveled around doing the Shrine Bowl uh, combines when that was a thing with Jim Bob Bryant. So I, I learned a lot from him. Uh, you know, some good, some bad. <laughs> Jim Bob would agree probably that too. Um, you know, it's, so it's, it's been a, it's been, I've been around a lot of really good minds in the game of football and both from the strategy standpoint and the motivation standpoint. Right. One last question and, and kind of, you almost led into it, uh, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, you know, Eastern North Carolina football for decades and decades and decades seemed to kind of come off of the Jack Colley coaching tree and, you know, yeah. Eastern North Carolina football. Or, or Chip Williams and some of those guys, yeah. you know, it was three yards and um, a lot of buck sweep and, and, you know, fullback trap and a lot of wing tee. And, you know, Eastern North Carolina football was really, really, really run heavy for a long time. And then you mentioned some of these guys like Jim Bob Bryant, you know, throw Caleb King in there, some of these other guys that have been an influx of, of new ideas. How has the style of football changed in Eastern North Carolina since you began your coaching career? versus today because i know here in the west and in different parts of the state you know it went from you know when when you and i were coming up you know i football and power and run yeah. ball and now it's just everybody wants to spread you out have you seen that same changes in eastern north carolina it, a, absolutely uh you know don't get me wrong if you're in duplin county you're still gonna line up <laughs> and run, run the wing team but you know everybody else is i mean even even your jacksons of the world who you know, they're twins open, but they're still they're running, you know, midline and triple and things of that nature. It, it's really just coming kind of full circle. We're all just running the same stuff. It's just out of gun now. Um, and a lot of that is to keep it exciting for the players. I mean, to a degree that really, you know, you get your basketball athletes that you might not get if you line up in three, three yards in a cloud of dust all the time. I mean, don't get me wrong. We still get double tight into the wishbone from time to time when, 
you know, sometimes you need a mentality type play or series, and, and that's that's part of it. But the game the game is evolving; it will always evolve, and and eventually it'll come back full circle. But I will tell you that it's kind of in my opinion. But you run into a lot of these younger coaches that don't know how to line up against things like a double tight wishbone, or you know, they don't they don't understand that you know the influence of pool and you know different nature of stuff that you get from an under center play. Um, so, you know, it, it's nice to mix those things in there. And it's, I've been lucky to, to, to learn a lot from a lot of people out. We we're having a conversation the other day. Um, you know, there's a group of us that all played for uh, Coach Seipel. Uh, Andrew Gurley at, at Croatan, uh, Craig Underwood at uh, Hoggard, um, uh, Tim Grady at James Keenan, uh, Teague at Reedsville. I mean, if you look at our, our kind of combined record, it's like, 30 something and four or something right now this year, you know, and it's, it, it's a testament of being around great coaches and, and that knowledge being passed on. And, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. Everybody's learning, everybody's changing, everybody's evolving. And the game of football is still going to be the game of football, you know, get your athletes in space and see what happens. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, uh, well, one, one last question. you got a big game uh, this week. Uh, taking on Dixon High School. Uh, Dixon's one of those teams. I kind of looked at them as well. I think they're a little bit sneaky better than their record shows. I mean, they, they've played a brutal schedule, and but they play hard every game. So I don't think that's just going to be a show up and win kind of ball game. Oh, absolutely not. They are they are well coached. Uh, Coach Davis there, he's in year two. Um, they are definitely in the weight room. They're definitely physical up front. They run an offense that is very difficult to defend. And they're like 16 points away from being like five and one. So, you know, it's misleading. Their record is misleading. They lost a shootout to West Carteret in like a 51-49 game. They lost an overtime game to Trask. They lost a very tight ball game, one score game to a North Duplin team that's undefeated. Um, you know, we are definitely not going to take them lightly. Uh, we can't do that. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, we can meet force with force up front and, and take care of business, but they are not going to come in and just lay down. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, well, hey, good luck to that game. Good luck the rest of the season. I know we'll probably see you in the playoffs coming up down the road. Uh, I know as a coach, you've got that mentality one week at a time. But guys That's like good. me, I want to look ahead and uh, think about what this uh, November will look like. But uh, best of luck. And uh, I just appreciate you getting on and talking this ball with me today, Coach. I absolutely. Enjoyed it. Absolutely. And, again, guys, uh, Coach Jonathan Bird, White Oak High School, 6-1 uh, on the season. Uh, get out there, and I, I say this every week, whether I'm on Talk of Preps to the Charlotte Observer, and I'll say it here as well. Everybody go out there and buy tickets, support these schools. They need your money. Go buy some concessions, uh, whatever it takes. Uh, it's a tough time for schools, and they need all the help we can get. But uh, uh, for Coach Bird, I'm Chris Hughes, Carolina Preps, and we'll get you next week. All right.